These, these parapsychologists say that, look, we cannot produce an independently replicable experiment. But they don't say, that means we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Instead, they, go, they have two, two things they say. That's the nature of psi. Psi <laughs> is it's an actual required property of it. It's the kind of phenomenon that as you're getting closer in on it, it, it plays tricks on you and it, it goes off some other direction. This is taking us back to the ancient Greek gods, you know, and the, um, uh, where things happen because of the whim of these mm -hmm. Zeus and stuff like that. So that's where they're going, uh, as far as I can tell. They also throw in some quantum mechanics, of course. <laughs> uh, uh, but anything that's a mystery, uh, they throw, throw in. You know, they take that, 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 that all grist to their mill. And uh, they also, these, these parapsychologists who admit that they cannot produce scientific evidence, they say two things. One is that, well, that shows that there really is something there because it, it deliberately avoids being scientific. Mm. But also, uh, they uh, say that there's something wrong with science, not with uh, parapsychology. Science, we have to change. In fact, Bob John and Brenda Dunn, his uh, co-worker, uh, have written an article uh, con called Change the Rules. <laughs> In other words, they want science to change. And it reminds me of... Um, when uh, I was on uh, Scientific American Frontiers with Alan Alda, mm -hmm. they came to Eugene and because they wanted me to set up a test of a dowser and they also had me do some palm reading on that program. Uh, but when we tested the dowser, he was a very nice guy and he, he knew he was coming into the lion's den, and, but he cooperated and he failed completely on everything we did. And Alan Alda was a very nice guy, he took me aside and said, Ray, says, I'm very concerned. This guy is just, he's a nice guy and he's bungling everything. And I, you know, we have to say that, but we have to, how can we say it without hurting him too much, you know? <laughs> uh, and I remember we got in the van after we were testing at the fairgrounds in Eugene, because he, he had to find a place that was independent of in interference. And so we went all over to Eugene and we went to the fairgrounds and that was where his thousand rods said, this is a safe place to be tested. So that's where we tested him. And, uh, so we're going back in a van back to the University of Oregon where we were doing most of the interviewing and, and so on. And Alan began asking this uh, dowser, he said, you know, look, you were so sure mm -hmm. about what you could do. You were absolutely sure you could produce this and do exactly, find these targets just as you said you could, and you, you missed everything up. How do you account for that? So this dowser said, well, I don't blame Professor Hyman. He, he treated me well, he did everything, mm -hmm. everything was fair that way, everything was done fairly. Everyone was nice, you were nice, and so on. So all I can say is that the problem is that science hasn't caught up with us yet. Mm -hmm. And since then, this is what I think the parapsychologists are now saying, who admit that, by the way, it's only half the parapsychologists, the other half of parapsychologists are just in the opposite, saying that we have now established the reality of sign Scientifically. Uh, yes. Scientifically, yeah. beyond any doubt, reasonable doubt. So you have these two camps now in parapsychology. And they're fighting with each other. You're, the, uh, they don't fight with each other. They don't even well, acknowledge they disagree. one oh, No, okay. they don't even talk. I, I wish I could get them. I, I spoke at, um, there was a meeting in uh, two years, three years ago in the uh, uh, University of British Columbia. Uh, they had uh, two Nobel Prize winners mm -hmm. and some other people. They had this forum on parapsychology, but they had me there as well. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, the idea was to examine the current state of parapsychology and why, this was in the program, and why uh, scientists are not accepting the evidence even when it's there. Mm -hmm. this, so, uh, they beg the question already. So that's one camp, but this other camp that says uh, there's not going to be evidence the way science, scientists want there to be because those, uh, those criteria are too stringent to, it's, science is too demanding. Um, the comments you made just a minute ago when you're, I think, talking about changing approaches where uh, originally uh, expert critics like yourself would criticize the research methods, right, and say here's a failing or there's a failing. You're now saying maybe that was a fool's errand or something in, in, in that 
right now, anyone, an armchair skeptic, could say, just repeat it. Just show me uh, uh, that it's repeatable, and then uh, uh, they don't have to be statisticians or experts. That does seem to be a shift of uh, uh, approaches. Okay. Uh, okay. It, it, to simplify it, okay, we'll, let's, we'll, we'll accept it at that level. But the point I wanted to make, I was trying to make, was that at this meeting, uh, mm. with the two Nobel Prize winners, by the way, uh, as well, there's was quite, quite some prestigious people there. Richard Wiseman was there and mm -hmm. I was there. My goal was there was to, I wanted to bring these two camps of parapsychology con confront one another and say, okay, well, how do you handle this? Because mm -hmm. Jessica Utz was there and Dean Radin was there. They were the, they're on the side of the people saying, we have established the reality of psi beyond a reasonable doubt. Right. And we've done it by the hardest of hard scientific procedures. Mm -hmm. And then there's this other camp of people, and I quoted them. I had them, I had a list of them. They weren't only Bob John was there, so they had one of them there, uh, who said that no, we don't have, we can't repeat anything. We don't have, according to scientific evidence, we don't have anything. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to bring them together and say, well, how do you account for this? And this was the whole point of my talk. Mm -hmm. I got no response whatsoever. There's no, 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 no response from the parapsychologists, and I still have not find. So they don't acknowledge one another, they don't, but they don't even talk about this, mm. and I can't get them to come, I can't, how come these other guys are saying that there's nothing there? They don't, they won't respond. Mm. And uh, I don't know what's going on, it is, it's weird, these people, I don't think, they live in a different world. At first, they, 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 my experience, with, when I meet parapsychologists, I'm very impressed with them. They're very nice people, they're trained and have a PhD in something or other, mm -hmm. they know their science, uh, they're well read, uh, you consider them sincere. They're yeah. not trying to pull one over and, on and people. And that's, that's until you, I'll give you one story, and I'll, I'll mention his name because I don't mind being sued now. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, Charlie Tart was a major parapsychologist for a while. I don't know if you ever heard of him. It was Targ, and it's also Tart, T-A-R-T. Well, uh, when I was at Stanford, Percy Diaconis was somehow a friend of Charlie Tart's, but you know, he was a friend of mine, and uh, he's a teacher, magician. statistician. He's also a famous magician. Uh, he said, Ray, it'd be good to get together with Charlie Todd. He's, at, teach, he's up there and he lives right next to, to Berkeley, and, um, but he taught at UC Davis. And so we went and visited him. We spent, had a nice day. He was a nice uh, host. He ran me through some of his psi experiments mm -hmm. there, and uh, we discussed things, and uh, he told me how we had more in common than were the extremists on both sides. You know, he said, you know, we ought to be, stay together, Ray, and be good friends and stuff like that. Uh, when I left... Uh, and went back to Eugene. I left Stanford and went back to Eugene. Suddenly, uh, I get this um, note from uh, Charles Tart saying, you, you, you were on this program. He says, you think I don't know about it. You were on this program in Canada, a TV show, and you criticize my work. Mm. And since we're friends, you have no right to do that unless you ch first check with me first. Wow. That's and not how first, science works, huh? Yeah, I, but, but anyways, I didn't remember talking about his work even on his program. So I called the uh, producer of the show, and she was very nice. She was very, she went through a lot, she said, I went through, not only did I go over the show, but I went through the outtakes. We never mentioned Charles Tartarer's wow. work. Wow. And she wrote him a letter saying that. I didn't hear anything. You'd think he wanted to thank, you know, he'd apologize, something like that. Uh, a month after that, he got another letter saying, you did it again. Well, he says, you think I'm not aware of this, but I have friends that live in Italy, and you are on an Italian t television, and you uh, criticize my work again. Well, the, the whole show in Italy was on Urigella, and I don't remember mentioning Tarka's work. And I mm -hmm. again contacted uh, the people in Italy. Mm -hmm. They were very nice. They went over it, and they said, there's no, no mention of anyone by the name of Charles Tart in the program. Mm -hmm. So I wrote to... Uh, and I also had the, the, the producer in Italy wrote to Charles Todd and said, we didn't mention your work at all. Mm -hmm. Next time I saw Charles Todd, I was attending a parapsychological association meeting. They, meet, they invite me every once in a while to show that they don't have any horns. And um, <laughs> so I was attending the meeting and uh, Tart was there. And every time I walked, walked up to him, I was going to say hello or something like that. He would turn his back and leave me. Wow. They, held a, they had a big party they were holding. And uh, I was in the room at this party, parapsychological party. He walked in the room. He saw me. He turned around, made a big, it wasn't, uh, and just subtly, he made a big show of it. He turned his back and marched out. Mm. 
And I said, okay, if you want to do that, that's fine. But I don't know what's going on. But I found also, that's just one example. When I meet parapsychologists, I'm impressed with them. They're, they're nice people. They're, they are uh, well-read. They seem to be fair-minded and so on. The more I get to know them, the deeper and deeper, suddenly peculiar things begin coming out. <laughs> uh, and that's just one example. But well, I've met skeptics for whom that also applies. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> we're, all, we're all peculiar in some way. I, by the way, I always point out that, in my mind, skeptics are mutants. We are not, mm. the brain, we are not, as a psychologist, everything I know about human evolution and psychology, uh, it's not normal to be a skeptic. We're an aberration, right? Yeah, a, a mutant, I would call yeah, us. Yeah, mutant. Uh, so we, we, are, we are actually not normal people. Because <laughs> uh, it's not typical to be a skeptic. Mm. It's very, very difficult. It's a very unusual thing to be a skeptic about anything.